In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. For most of his ministry, Jesus tried to hide his true, true identity. He often referred himself as the Son of Man. And when others tried to worship him or spread the news of his miracles, Jesus told them, be silent. And he didn't want their praise. He didn't want their publicity. At least, at least not yet. And why was that? Well, because up until today, Palm Sunday, as we know it, Jesus' time had not yet come. But today was the day. Today was the entrance into Jerusalem where he proclaimed himself King of the Jews. And now was the time. And as he makes his way to Jerusalem, the day that, as I said, we refer to as Palm Sunday, the time is at hand for him to reveal his mission. Jesus knew what was about to befall him. He knew what was waiting for him in Jerusalem. He knew that he was going to be betrayed and crucified and then, bur uh, then buried in a borrowed tomb. But nevertheless, Jesus had a mission given to him by the Father. So Jesus knew that as he entered the gates of Jerusalem, there was no turning back now. And it was at this moment, as Jesus is descending the Mount of Olives, that he announces to his disciples and the world that he is all in, that he was going to go full force ahead. And for those of you that have been fortunate to make a pilgrimage to the Holy Lands, you may remember that at the foot of the Mount of Olives is the Garden of Gethsemane. And in less than a week, Jesus would soon kneel there and pray this most heartbreaking prayer of his short life. Perhaps the most heartbreaking prayer in history. And St. Luke in his Gospel captures these words as Jesus is praying to the Father in heaven. And Jesus says, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. In other words, relieve me of what's about to happen to me. But then right away, Jesus goes on and he says, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Christ knew that the pain and suffering that was to unveil before him and the betrayal and rejection that awaited him. Yet Jesus remained steadfast to his mission. He knew it is his Father's mission, a mission to redeem what was a fallen world. But on this day, a day that we call Palm Sunday, in the streets of that holy city, Jerusalem, it is a different story altogether. The crowd is building up with excitement. They began throwing their cloaks on the ground to make a path for the one who is entering their city. And they were waving palm branches and they shouted the praises of the man who many of them believed was about to get them out of slavery and to redeem Israel and set them free. But instead, what did the people see? Some of them were surprised to see that Jesus was riding not on a chariot, not on a beautiful horse, but rather a donkey's colt. However, this was in keeping with the prophecy of the Old Testament 
of, of, of Zechariah, where it said, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion, shout, daughter Jerusalem, for see your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey. And as Jesus went through the streets, the main streets of Jerusalem, the crowd began singing and shouting and joyfully praising and crying out, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. But we know the story of Christ, don't we? We know the story of the passion. Not everyone was happy on that day. So listen to the rest of the story. The people of Jerusalem were longing for a king. They were praying for a king. A descendant of their greatest king, a great warrior by the name of King David. And they called this king that they were waiting for Messiah. And it was this type of king that they longed for who they believed would lead them to victory over their enemies. Even the disciples were longing for this Messiah, and they were beginning to believe that Jesus just might be the one. Well, God sent them the Messiah, but it was not the Messiah that they were expecting. For one thing, Jesus didn't say anything about overthrowing the oppressive Roman government. He didn't say anything about beating up on the Roman army. Neither did he speak about reestablishing the house of David in all its glory. Instead, Jesus said what? He said, my kingdom is not of this world. But the people were not listening. They expected more. And just like the people, the disciples were also a little misguided in their excitement. After all, even though Jesus told his followers what to expect, they were like us. They were a little deaf to Jesus' real message. Even today, we try to be followers, but we don't quite understand what the kingdom of God means. And that's the first thing that we need to notice on this Palm Sunday. But there's a second thing as well. And that is Jesus telling the people of Jerusalem, your Savior has arrived and I am Him. And this is the good news that we can take from this Palm Sunday. Jesus didn't come into the world to rule over us. He came into the world to redeem us. He is our King, but more importantly, He is our Savior. Some people think that when Christ returns, He will force us to do His will. The truth of the matter is that He will enable us to be like He is. And that makes all the difference in the world. My dear friends, it's not enough for us to acknowledge that Christ is our King or that because of His sacrificial love, our sins have been forgiven. There must be a time when we must allow Him to be the Lord of our lives and we begin to live the kind of life that men and women that God wants us to be. The cross of Jesus reveals the reality of sin that is all around today. The reality of evil was evident in Jesus' day that the only ones who remained faithful were who? Those that were with Jesus were his disciple John and a few women, including his own mother, the Panagia. Even his own disciples, when they saw what happened to Christ, hanging from a cross, scattered, for they feared for their own lives. And the Blessed Virgin, the Panagia, and Mother of God experienced a parent's worst pain to outlive your own child. If we examine the events that took place on Good Friday, 
there would be very little in it that would warrant us to call it good in any way because there is so much pain that we hear in the story and the passion of Christ in the events on that solemn day and sad day. But yet we do call it Good Friday, don't we? So what's so good about it? Well, we can look to our own tradition and be proud of how we interpret the view of Good Friday and why we do look at it as good as well. We have one of the most beautiful traditions in our Eastern Orthodox faith, in our Greek Orthodox faith, in our Eastern Orthodox faith. During this week ahead, the days leading up to the resurrection of our Lord, how do we say goodbye to someone? We don't say, I'll see you later. We depart with the exclamation of Kali Anastasis, which means may you have a good or a happy resurrection. We say this because we wait in anticipation for the glorious resurrection of Christ. And we wait with anticipation and believe with conviction and hope of that very thing. And herein lies the miracle. God took the worst the world could do to Jesus and made it good. If Good, if good Friday reveals the, the reality of sin, then Easter Sunday, Pascha Sunday, cancels the power of sin. St. Paul wrote that even though Jesus was in the form of God, he emptied himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. That's the meaning of kalyanastasis, good or happy resurrection. At Pascha, hope is resurrected because through the greatest act of humility, Jesus' death and resurrection assured us that life beyond the grave is true. We say Kali Anastasis because the disciple Peter betrays the Lord, but finds forgiveness from the God, from God, even though he sold out three times and denied that he ever knew him. We say Kali Anastasis because the doubter Thomas has his doubts answered. We say Kali Anastasis because Mary Magdalene wept outside the grave when she saw her master hung and killed on a cross, but is comforted when she sees that he truly is risen. My dear brothers and sisters, there's no more beautiful season than this season of Holy Week because it is the season of hope. Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday, is two emotions felt and experienced in one day. This morning we realize the ecstasy, and tonight we're going to experience the agony, or the beginning of this agonizing week, jammed up against each other, which is the enigma of life. We go from a high today to a low tonight, and are called upon to have faith, even when faith seems so illogical. Finally, Palm Sunday is linked to Pascha Sunday. St. Paul said it so beautifully when he writes, God exalted Jesus and gave him the name above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Each year, our priests in all of our Orthodox parishes tell our faithful to not avoid the journey of great and holy Lent, not to avoid the journey of great and holy week, and only attend on those big or high holidays like Good Friday, and again for the Anastasis and on Saturday evening, and think that we properly took part and completed our Lenten and our Pascha experience. Because rushing to hear the symbols of Pascha without all of the beautiful stories, without all of the beautiful events that take place evening after evening between Palm Sunday and Pascha, really gives us, if we don't experience that, 
a somewhat distorted and an incomplete picture and message of what Christ is doing for us. So during these upcoming days ahead, I ask you to honestly wrestle with the paradoxes of Holy Week and with your own struggles with good and evil. God loved this world enough to send His Son of Peace for our sake and for the saving of our souls. So let us not miss the opportunity to let Christ come into our hearts and cleanse it through our goodness. We need to use this Holy Week as spiritual food for our souls. We need to use each of these nights to stay with Christ, to walk with Him, to suffer with Him, so that we may come to realize more fully the gift that Jesus Christ gives to us, and that is the resurrection and life everlasting. Amen. Kalyanastasi.